G'day, I'm Scott Sanders, and welcome to the Reach Australia podcast. This podcast is all about seeing churches become healthy, evangelistic, and multiplying. Now, you have pressed play on how do you measure the ecosystem, and I've got Dave Moore, who's the executive pastor at Hunter Bible Church, and Greg Lee, who's the lead pastor at Hunter Bible Church in Newcastle, which is just a bit north of Sydney. <laughs> G'day, Scott. So that, that's a reference to Sydney. You know, Nova yeah, yeah. probably don't like talking about the Sydney fact is there, a bit you know. south of us. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, that's that's a, like, I should have yeah. There's yeah. a town south of us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we want to push in to this episode all about measures. How do you actually measure stuff? Uh, Greg helpfully has talked about the four Ps on a number of occasions through this sort of podcast series. Uh, you want to have uh, purpose, people, programs, and performance. And so we want to really understand how do you actually measure what's going on? So, Greg, can you tell us, what's the, the biblical basis for measuring? You know, should we measure? Is it biblical? Oh, well, we could go to all sorts of things. We could go to census. And, not, definitely yeah, not yeah. biblical. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go with love. Um, as shepherds, we want to love our sheep, which means we, we need to know what's going on. So, um, why does a parent measure the growth of their child, of their baby? Uh, it's because they want to know what's going on. Why, why do schools um, test kids at the end of the year? It's because we want to know that the teaching has actually had some impact. Um, we measure what's happening at church because we love the sheep enough to want to know what's going on out there rather than just hoping for the best and guessing. So Dave, uh, I want you to help us sort of uh, push into some of the headline goals for each of the purpose areas. Yep. So when you're you know, looking across Hunter Bible Church, what are the headline goals for each purpose area? Well, uh, yeah, each each purpose area has particular ones. There's going to have really, really kind of your normal ones. So you want your attendance on a on a Sunday. You want how many people are there, and you want to track that really well because it's too often that uh, we'll go, oh, that seemed really full. You know, there are lots of lots of people there, and uh, one of the things I think that we can do is we can remember the days that are full and the highlights and go, that's how many people we've got there, rather than actually the trend, the trend is this. Um, so one that's actually counting, counting, counting heads. number of people in the room. And if you can, room. actually knowing people who are in the room. Yes, that's right. So um, we count at a particular time. So time. So we, we count during the sermon. So how many people in chairs during the sermon? Because you've got people coming in and out with kids programs and that type of thing. And so that's, that's a helpful kind of baseline for us there. Um, but the other thing you want to count is how many new people in the room. So uh, this is one of the ones that I think as a team we're like, uh, it seems like heaps of work, but then we decided, no, this is actually really important. We need to know on this particular day, how many people are here for the very first time? And gee, it's been good. It's been one of those things that's been a great joy because you're going, oh, we actually had 12 new people at that service on that day. Okay, well, because one of the things that does, that then leads to your performance one of how are we going following up those 12? Uh, so you've got numbers like that on around your Sunday. Um, it's things like uh, your mission purpose. Uh, we want to have an idea of how many people, uh, we'd love to know how many people were invited along to a particular program, yep. but that's kind of hard to do. Uh, what are, what, so what we measure is the number of people who come along at least once and the number of people who stay for at least three of the series or at least five of the series, that type of thing. Those two numbers help us work out how well the series is so performing. So when, when you're talking about a series, you mean a, a, like a preaching series or you're talking about like a membership course or a mission course? Yeah, we're talking about those those courses that happen throughout the week, that type of thing. Yeah, so the life course. Yeah. yeah. So pushing into um, the purpose area, so what are some uh, key measures for, say, the deep in word purpose area? Yeah, so we want to see uh, a p p percentage of people who are in both groups. Uh, so that's one of the, the key ones. But not only that, we want to see how many leaders do we have being trained up. So if we're expecting growth in as people come along to church, that type of thing, that means we're going to need to put those people into growth groups afterwards. But we can't put people into growth groups afterwards unless we've got leaders who are being trained to lead those growth groups for next year. So it's not just the number of people in growth groups, it's how many people are being trained to lead those growth groups for next year. What about mission? Uh, so that's where we're going. How many people have uh, come along to this course and how many people have stayed for some of it and how many people have gone to the follow-up course? Uh, one of the things, uh, just from a mission perspective, uh, is that 
people very rarely become a Christian in that course. It normally takes three to six months. Mm. And so you've got a follow-up course you want them to go through. And their likelihood of going to the follow-up course, we found out, increases the more times they come to the first course. Mm. So if we can get people to come a second, third time to this course, then the likelihood of staying for the follow-up course increases, which increases the likelihood of them yep. becoming a Christian. So this is where uh, data you know, is really important. You can actually start to assess and evaluate and actually start to see trends and patterns mm. and yep. see where there are problems uh, you know, in, the, in the system that you've uh, created as well. Yep. Okay, w- uh, what about uh, for community life? That seems like a really hard area to, yeah. uh, to measure. Oh, well, is it? I don't know. We want to see that people... <laughs> so partly, it's uh, the number of people in our growth groups gives us an idea of that, that thing. But part of the thing we'll do is we'll do a survey of how people finding their, 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 their growth group, how they connecting with each other. So that gives us a little bit of a measure there. But also we're looking at um, how many um, how many new people uh, are joining church. Mm-hmm. And we also, uh, this took us a while to get good numbers to make sure we we're chasing the number, but how many people are leaving? So you've got the front door and the back door. And so having an idea of how many people are walking out the back door, that actually gives us a picture of what's happening in the community as well. And learning to chase down every person. Mm-hmm. Every person who leaves and working out why that is, why so they that's, believe that, That's really helpful. The importance of surveying, mm. uh, doing uh, focus analysis to understand actually reasons why. Because mm. you'll, you'll probably identify there are a number of actually good reasons why people leave. You know, they've mm. changed for job reasons. They're, they're going to be part of a church plant. Um, there are also some bad reasons as well, and yeah. they can actually inform how you can improve you yeah. know, church yeah. life as well. It kind of comes back to love. You want to love people even as they're leaving, mm. which means that if they're going to leave us, we want to help them leave well. Mm. And we want to help them to find a church. And if they're leaving happily, we might want to help them to find a new church in the city that they're moving to. The only way we're going to know that is if we measure it. Mm. So push into the serve purpose area. What are you measuring there? Well, uh, we, want to, we want to record when people are serving a particular thing. And so that gives us a percentage of how many people we, we, can, we look at how many people in growth groups and how many of those people in growth groups who serve. So we have a particular thing that we want to encourage people to serve a growth group first and then serve in another area of church life. Because um, I think, yeah, we can go into that, but uh, we want to see that percentage to be as high as we can. It gives us an idea how many people are involved in church but are not serving. Because a good indication is if they're not serving in their growth group, it's then probably not going to serve in another area well. And the very best way they can start serving, or they can start serve a few people really well in lots mm. of ways before we get them to serve lots of people in a few ways. Now, I, I love I love how there's a language around your measurements as well. You know, you've just used a phrase that I've heard Greg use a number of times as we've been talking, you know, loving a few people so you can, you know, serve serve the many. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is where sort of, you know, you say it regularly enough that That's you know, right. people start to get this habit of... <laughs> it's almost like we actually believe it. That's right. <laughs> Now, I've, I've saved the, I think, the hardest one to measure last. You know, try and grab a, you know, sort of a, a, a mag pasta, you know, and hold him down and say, how do you, what do you measure? Yeah, and yeah. often they, they look at you blankly. Yeah. Uh, so, Godward attentiveness. Tell us about how you measure Godward attentiveness. Hands in the <laughs> That's right. How many eyes are closed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> during, during singing. Which is very hard to count yeah. if you've got your eyes closed, isn't it? Heart so, rate yeah. monitors. That's right. That's right. Well, I, so I think part of this is there's, it's not... Um, uh, it's not bad to use anecdotal evidence yes. for from measurements. Mm. And so we actually want to... So this is where surveys are helpful as well. So how have you grown as, as a Christian? Um, uh, has your Christian life been hard? Have you have you been... Compared to three months ago, we did a survey recently, we said, it, c- compared to three months ago, do you think you're more prayerful or the same or less? Or mm. I'm, I'm more prayerful than three months ago, agreed. Disagree. That type of thing. That gives us anecdotal evidence from people where they think they're at. Mm. Um, but also, by having good team structures, actually provides good anecdotal evidence coming up. We get to hear the stories from people about how they've found that particular thing, and yeah. So th- th- that helps as well. So seeking out those stories, not just the positive, but the ones that so, are challenging. So well. this is this is where you know, like I could see your energy around this. You know, you're you're you know you're a data guy, but actually. <laughs> You're a data guy because you're a loving church and you're a loving guy, mm. but there's energy around hearing the stories. So again, these are being yeah. clothed not just in brutal numbers, no, no. but the stats are, are people and stories of, yeah. of change. So how important is it as a staff team 
to be celebrating you know, these statistics? Well, yeah, the, the two work hand in hand. Mm. So when you see a number, you go looking for stories that, that represent that number. And so, for instance, if the number of people at church is starting to decline, we want to go asking people why. Mm. Um, likewise, if you hear a story, you then think, well, is this really widespread? Mm. Uh, is it just this person who's got this issue? Um, or are there a whole bunch of people? So the anecdotes and the numbers aren't opposed to each other. They feed into each other and they inform each other. Okay, I want to I want to just press in, Dave, into you know sort of what do you measure on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, and an annual basis? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So tell. Yeah. So from a weekly basis, is that attendance? So whatever you do weekly, that's the thing you want to measure. It's that classic thing of you care about the things you measure. And so, it, so for youth and church and uh, growth groups, more and more moving to a weekly thing. We want to know exactly how many people, that type of thing. Um, to a monthly thing, monthly is where we're going, okay, how, how are we looking at beginning to see trends? So uh, I think for things like serve, uh, you want to see a monthly change. It's hard to do a, a weekly change with things like serve. Uh, and a monthly change on, on um, community and having people join the community and leaving the community. Yep. Anything more than a month on community, I think, would be dangerous because people matter and in our world, four weeks might not feel that long. But if someone's not, if someone said, I'm, I, I'm not sure I'm going to come to church anymore or I'm going to join church and we don't contact them for four weeks, that's poor form. Yep. And so we want to love those people well. Uh, so that kind of monthly review for that. Uh, we do our finances every month. So how are we going this month in finances? For the six, 12 month one, I think that's where the, the Godward attentiveness one kind of fits in because it's more anecdotal, it's how yeah. people, uh, we're, we're seeing change over, over that time. I think um, six months is a good point to look back and go, how many people have become, become Christians in this, this period? Um, partly because it seems to be one of those things that you'll get certain weeks, three people became Christians this week and as a staff team we hear the stories and pray and then you don't do that for a little bit, but being able to look back for a while and go, look, this this season's been And great. what about the, the big trends, you know, sort of looking at back on five years? Ooh, yeah, we should do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, why don't you tell us, what are the things that we measure year on year? Yeah. So this, this last year the number was this, this year the number is this. What are those things that we compare year on year? Yeah, so that's really the, the number of people. So the number of people in close group, the number of people we've got coming on Sunday, our uh, the number of people who, who were converted uh, some people who joined so they're the big year on year ones because then we yeah. can go we can compare that that period to the one before yeah. which then helps you to get to the five years so five years ago this number was this mm. five years ago now Greg how do you uh, deal with sort of the just the emotion of numbers and not seeing your worth tied up in numbers and your identity tied up in your growth of your church or lack of growth in your church um, it could be by hiding yourself from numbers. So that's that's one way to do it. Um, the more I insulate myself from seeing the reality, the less I have to face it. Yep. Um, another one is um, when I see the number, if the number is bad, it drives me to prayer. It drives me to um, to ask God to help us to fix it. And, it. and it galvanizes me. When we see the number and the number's exciting, it drives us to thanksgiving. Um, and so it's Godward attentiveness is the answer mm. to that. Mm. Excellent, uh, that's, really, that's really helpful. Um, one one sort of final final question that I want to want to push into: How do you uh, how do you get the individual outcomes to be aligning with the overall church outcomes, and how to how do measures and thinking about performance help in that alignment process? Explain that some more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was a big question. <laughs> it is a big question. I guess. I'm glad uh, you said that. The I was going, what? The question should be, Scott. What do you want me to say? That's that's, that's really yeah, it was yeah. quite a leading. Yeah, can you pass me a script? Yeah, it was great. quite a, it was quite a leading uh, question. I think uh, what am what am I trying to say? How do you help your staff team understand that their day to day task is aligned with their purpose area is aligned with the overall outcomes of the whole church? So this is where this is where measures, you know, job descriptions, uh, asking these bigger questions, but. But I think sometimes we can be so, or some people can be so abstracted mm. and lost in the big picture uh, and not then have the certainty, what am I meant to be doing today in this time? Yeah, okay. 
I, yeah. I, I think mean, can you see both of you? Yeah, no. Because you're both yeah, very yeah, different yeah. in how Yeah, I'm interested in how he answers this because yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be the same. But. Well, I think you do it with vision. Uh, so um, all of the staff team is aligned around a particular vision um, and then having really clear goals about what each of our areas is trying to achieve this year and therefore a clear set of um, input goals. We're going to do these things. Um, so that this week, I know that the things that I'm doing are helping to achieve those input goals so that we can achieve those output goals so that we're reaching the vision. That is, um, the key is from vision right down to today, they all actually have to be aligned mm. and make sense. Mm. Um, I'd kind of hope that none of our staff wake up in the morning and go, you know, I've got no idea what I'm doing today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think one of the things with that um, is that it's, I think one of the things I see you do, Greg, is going, um, taking that idea and applying it to each staff member specifically. So different staff members are going to have different motivators that help them see that thing. And so some staff members, they're going to look at the numbers and they're going to go, they're rookie numbers. you got to get those numbers, you know, that yep. sort of thing. Some people are going to be like, and other people are not going to respond to that, but they need to be shown how the numbers, some people, if they're going to be like, if they're driven by the, the, the vision more and that's what captures them, you want to show them, you want to connect the numbers to that vision for them. And I think that's one of the things you do well is help people go from where you're at. What do you need to get your job done in this structure? And then going, okay, well, let's make sure you understand how this bit fits, this bit fits, and leverage those things for that particular person. Because if you try and um, motivate, I suppose, everyone exactly the same, well, that's actually not understanding where everyone's at. Could you just give us an example of a number that everyone owns across the whole of church life? Ooh. Number of conversions. Okay, mm -hmm. so explain how uh, the serve pastor owns number of conversions. Because um, here's the thing. Um, he may be employed in serve, but he's a disciple of Jesus. And so he wants Jesus' kingdom to grow. And he's convinced that working in the serve thing is the best way for him to contribute. But he wants the kingdom to grow. He's passionately committed to people becoming Christians. And so it's not just the staff team. The whole of the church feels this sense of commitment to the number of conversions, whether they're employed in that area or not. Um, this is one of those things. You may be employed in a particular area of church, but you're a disciple of Jesus. And so you'll do whatever it takes. And you'll love it. Yeah. That is, I would say, uh, it's not one number. That is, the, in the same way the mission guy loves number of conversions, he's got to love the number of people who serve. Mm. And if he goes, oh, I don't care about the number of people who serve, all I care about the number of people converted. You know, no, you're not doing your job. Yeah. Your job is to care about people. And yeah, you're particularly responsible for this one, but you have to care for all of them. Yeah, that's right. Every point in the ecosystem is important. So you want everyone working in the ecosystem to mm. care about all those things. That's the classic thing we we're talking about with siloing. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you want you want your staff. So this is one of the things we haven't been able to because of COVID and that type of thing. But we would sit down and everyone's got their numbers on a piece of page, mm. and we can all see each other's numbers, and we get that awkward thing where numbers look good, number looks good, ministry, and we all kind of sheepishly look at the ministry guy, and he's like, yeah. And it's not Greg telling his staff, you've got to do this. It's the peer thing, the other M guys, the other, the, the, everyone in the room, all the, all the staff going, hey, we care about this. We want you to do this well because we know it affects our thing as well. Hmm. And, and we, have, we care about them for our church as well. Yeah. And when, it, when it's brilliant is when they say, can I come and help? Yes. So yeah. what do you I'm need from me? Yeah, what do you need from me to help this grow? Um, because not only do they care about each of the parts of the ecosystem work, they know that um, the better ministry works, the better deep in the world will work, the mm. better mission will work. They're actually relying on each other as well as caring about each other. Yeah, so the great conversations are the ones after the meeting where uh, someone will go up to the, the serve guy and say, hey, I just heard you discussing there. Can I raise with you a couple of ideas that, or have you thought about how you're doing this at the moment? I've got this guy on my team, he's really good at this. Can we sit down with you and help you with that? Mm. Simply because they want that area of church to work really well. That's really helpful. Thanks for helping us press into how to measure uh, pastoring with purpose across the church ecosystem. Now, if you uh, like what you've heard today, uh, please rate us on iTunes, 
uh, share share this episode with someone as well. Uh, measurement is such an important aspect of church life. And so share this episode with someone that you think could uh, value this. Now, if you're looking to move your church towards implementing an ecosystem approach, you'd benefit from Reach Australia's church health consultation. Uh, one of the things uh, we've loved over the years is getting a church consult. So uh, having someone come in and sit in our staff team and ask us the particularly pointed questions uh, and one of the things I loved about it is uh, they spent the first half of the time understanding us and getting us to express stuff that I think we had struggled to articulate for a while. Getting us to articulate the right way, helping us realise that these are the areas we need to work on and think through and then helping us to create a pathway forward. I think that's one of the things I loved about the consult is that um, it wasn't someone coming in telling us what to do, it was someone coming in helping us work out what we had to do in a way that helped us own it, love it, and run with it. 